I gotta tell you something right now, so get in your seat and I'll take a bow. Cause we gotta go and start the flip off to the shelf to pick, pick, pick. Oh, we have a show to put on your screen. Trust me now, cause my work's pristine. It's time to critique a classic movie. Let's have some fun and make it groovy. It's movie criticism of movies, yeah. I said it's movie criticism of movies, yeah. I said it's movie criticisms of movies yeah i said it's movie criticisms of movies yeah i said it's hey wh where am i well looks like i'm stuck here Hey, what's this I'm doing here? Hmm. Well, I guess in this episode of Movie Criticisms, I'll be reviewing Legends of Oz, Dorothy's Return. But before I do, let me go over my new rating system. Now, my rating system will be the same for the most part. I give a certain amount of points, a maximum amount of five points to each category, and add them all up to give a total score. The difference is that 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 instead of converting that score into a Rotten Tomato score, I convert it into into certificates. And the five certificates a movie can receive are Joseph Stone's vomit for a total of zero to five points, a tank of seawater with a tiny filter for six to ten points. A double-edged sword for 11 to 15 points. A famous celebrity with a smelly breath for 16 to 20 points. And best of all, a new savior for 21 to 25 points. Now with all that being said, let's go somewhere over the rainbow. Legends of Oz, Dorothy's Return, is a 2014 CGI animated musical fantasy adventure. Set after the events of the classic 1939 Oz film, Dorothy Gale's old friends, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Cowardly Lion, use a rainbow machine to transport Dorothy back to Oz so that she can help save it from an evil jester. Now, when this film was released in 2014, it was heavily panned by critics and considered one of the worst anime movies ever made. But guess what? I kind of enjoyed it. Uh, okay, okay, stop, 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 stop. Put them down, put them down now, please. Okay? Let me explain why. You see, this movie can be incredibly creative at times. For instance, a subplot involves the Jester imprisoning the residents of Emerald City and controlling their brains. The inventive thing about this subplot is the fact that the mind control prisoners are portrayed as marionette puppets. How genius is that? I mean, have you ever stumbled upon a picture on the internet of an evil person or giant hand moving another person like they were their puppet? That is imagination at its best. Another imaginative moment that my grandmother brought up when watching this movie is a scene in the climax where the jester's scepter falls down his castle like a contraption. I don't know if that counts as creative, but if you think so, please let me know in the comments below. However, I do have one problem with the film, and that is the scene in the second act. It's when the Jester's flying monkeys raid Emerald City's castle to cause havoc. There's no point for them to come back, though. The Jester already has what he wants from the city. Why are the monkeys wasting their time? They have bigger fish to fry. I mean, Watch this scenario. Well, well, look what we have here, Howl. Howard, some Jolly Ranchers. Yeah, these will be delicious for Halloween Eve. Yeah, now grab the bag and let's go. You gotcha. Well, we're back, Howard. Yeah, Alps. We're here to cause a mess. 
Yeah, even though we already got what we wanted. But we don't care, so we're gonna do it anyway. Yeah! Let's cause a mess. <laughs> See what I mean? Whether you're trying to steal a magical scepter for an evil plan, or get your hands dirty on some Jolly Ranchers for Halloween, it's still pointless if you already got it in the first place. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to give three points to the content. While Dorothy is a likable and sweet woman, I'll admit that she is kind of boring as a protagonist because she's lacking the personality to make her a really fun presence. She's also quite bland and uninteresting as her only role is a plain old good guy hero. The villain, the Jester, is definitely not the most memorable antagonist for an animated movie. He's not that funny, he, either because his animation isn't exaggerated enough, or because of his voice actor, which I'll get to in the voice acting segment. Also, much like Dorothy, he isn't an interesting baddie, and that is because his backstory as the Wicked Witch's brother is barely explored. One additional criticism, too. This also makes very, very, very little sense. I mean, the, wick, wick, the Wicked Witch already has a sister. So where is her brother? The Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Cowardly Lion don't have super major roles in this movie until the end of the movie, so Oz fans will be disappointed. Putting that aside, the three are pretty bland. Although, the film does make some use out of Scarecrow's new brain. Other characters include a plump owl named Wiser, a princess made of China, and a marshmallow soldier called Marshall Mellow. To me, Mellow and China Princess stand out the most because while Mellow is a pleasant presence and a voice that's quite nice to listen to, the China Princess is really no nonsense. Although, I don't like the sappy love plot line that they developed. There's very little chemistry between them. As for Wiser, all I can call him is... nice. I'm going to give three points to the characters. The animation for this was made by Piranha Studios, a visual effects company in Los Angeles, and it's a mixed bag to me. Now, now it can be inventive, and and I especially love this scene where, where the where the rainbow that transports Dorothy back to Oz turns into a hand and picks her up. <laughs> That's pretty cute. Unfortunately. The animation is also not bouncy or stretching enough to support the more comical moments. That's uh, the scenes that had had the f the most funny potential are weakened down severely, mainly because of the animation. I'm gonna give it three points. Leah and Michelle is just okay as Dorothy. Sure, she can sound natural sometimes, but she can also sound quite insincere her other times, especially when she's crying. Martin Short is the jester, and as all, and once again, he hams it up way too much. Yes, sometimes it can work for his character, but other but other times, it makes him come off as a bit too annoying. Scarecrow, Tin Man, and Cowardly Lion are voiced by Dan Aykroyd. Kelsey Grammer, and Jim Belushi. They're okay, I guess, although um, Jim Belushi does overact sometimes. Oliver Platt provides the voice of Wiser the Owl, and he has this soft, tender voice. It's so lovely to listen to. The same praise can go to, can go to Hugh Denke as Marshall Mello, and his voice is also quite soothing and a little more elegant than what and then Platt. Lastly, we have Megan Hilty as the China Princess. She does a really good job at sounding sassy and no nonsense. I'm going to give three points to the voice acting for this movie. The musical score for Legends of Oz, 
which was composed by Toby Chu, is just okay at best. It's pretty noticeable at the film's start, but loses that as the film progresses. This movie also contains some original songs, and again, they're just okay. They serve a purpose in the story, sure, but they're also nowhere near as catchy as or memorable as, say, Over the Rainbow or Off to See the Wizard. I'm going to give the music three points. In conclusion, Legends of Oz, Dorothy's Return may have been made to be a total cash grab and is nowhere near as remarkable as the original 1939 movie, but unlike most cash grabs, it does at least try to be creative and, and watchable. Yes, it may have a few pointless scenes, and yeah, some of the old characters have l lost a lot of their charm, and sure, the animation isn't that great, but I think it's a little underrated. Yeah. Legends of Oz has received a total of 15 points out of 25, which means it's a double-edged sword. So, have you seen Legends of Oz Dorothy's Return? If not, do you want to or not, and why? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this review video, then feel free to like, subscribe, and or share. Now, if you excuse me, I have to find a way to get out of this nasty prison. What if I... Hmm. Uh, what are these doing here? Well, might as well wear them while trying to find my way back home. So, where was I? Wah!